Hey there and welcome back to Lightroom Quick Start Bootcamp. In this video we're going to continue down the right hand panels in the library module. Let's get to it. All right, in that last video we ended up with the keyword list and how that's just, oh, big, almost disaster. <laughs> but um, we, there, there's more to it. Like I said, there's more to it. We, we can address some things there. It's just we need to move on for this quick start idea because the biggest thing I want you to take away with keywording is just being able to assign some keywords and then you can utilize the filtering mechanism up here in the grid to be able to search for those and show those explicitly. Or if you're going to make a collection, you can make a smart collection that grabs certain keywords automatically. So then whenever those keywords are added, it's just automatically then put into that smart collection. That can be really cool and really powerful feature. So you can start to see how those things are starting to come together and how you can utilize the power of Lightroom. Because sometimes I know people will ask, why would I do this if I'm, you know, I don't like Lightroom and how it's such a closed system and the need of the catalog and all that kind of stuff. Well, these this is one of those values that Lightroom brings together for you. Lightroom has those collections, has the smart collections, the opportunity to reach out and grab some of these other pieces of metadata from throughout your library, throughout your whole catalog and show them, let's say in that smart collection, in this case, maybe based on a keyword or two or any other attributes that we've seen. So yes, keywords can be extremely powerful. There is definitely a lot more to it, but we're going to move on now to the metadata. Now the metadata here is, it's split into a couple of different views. It's split into, a, how do I want to say this most effectively? We're only seeing the text-based metadata, I guess is the best way to put it, the informational metadata. Because when we get into the develop module, certainly those items are also considered metadata as well. Whether you're talking about the white balance that you pulled off the camera, that's a piece of metadata too whether you're looking at the processing settings, the changes that you made there, those are technically going to be considered metadata as well. All right, so we can certainly have some presets for metadata. Again, as you can see here, since I have none listed, this is not something that I have found valuable. Certainly there's going to be some people that are just going to say, you got to do this, you got to do that. If I was more of a commercial photographer, I could see myself having use of this a lot. I could see it becoming very valuable to me. But as everything is really just, it's all in the same vein of like travel photography, I don't see the need to have a preset yet because it just hasn't really come across. It just hasn't been shown to me or I haven't had the need where I'm like, oh, I wish I had this. I wish I had that. The metadata is there and it is what it is. When I create a caption, it's about that image. I don't need a preset to populate caption information. And as you can see here, for some reason, the copyright data wasn't saved through. So something happened on my camera. I had mentioned in a previous video how I have copyright information always going to the, to the file. Something happened, so obviously that's a problem and that's where a preset could be really helpful to make sure I can apply all of that information all at the same time. Of course, I can also do that on import when I import those images. So there's just kind of, there's just different ways of handling all this data and processing it, getting it to what you want it to be. All right, now let's click on this next item over here where it says default. You have a lot of different information available. So if you choose your EXIF data, this is gonna be stuff that comes straight off your camera, like your camera settings and things that are specific to your image, to the camera. You've got the IPTC added, here, let's just do IPTC only, where you can have things like here it says your address, your state, all these different things. Now these are things where your presets probably could be very helpful if you wanted to make sure everything was loaded in there. For me, I actually do this when I am editing my images for my agents. And when I need to have that information there, I then get it applied. And when you see how we synchronize the data, you can see how it's not really that big of a deal if you don't have the preset. So again, do you do a preset? Do you not do a preset? It just depends on how nuanced and different you need that information to be. If you had 
three or four clients that had specific needs, I would say absolutely do three or four different presets because that would be a no-brainer. But when it comes to my work with virtually zero clients, because I'm doing things about, what I mean by zero clients is my individual images, I don't usually sell them directly. I rely on my agents to sell the images, and then I do fine art photography, I do educational things like that. I don't do individual digital print or digital sales, I should say. It's, it would be a print sale that I would normally do. All right, so let's take a look at some other ideas. So IPTC extension, so there's going to be a little additional pieces of information that you could, that, will, that will pop up there. Um, you know, some location information, and that's going to be specific to, you see how it automatically filled it in, Bruno, Idaho, United States, because it's utilizing the GPS data. And so that's where it's going to come through and be able to recognize Lightroom is saying, hey, I think we know where that was where that was from. I usually just leave it on default because this shows me the information that I, I always need anyway. If I wanted to give it a caption, I'll give it a caption. If I want to give it a different title, I'll give it a different title. And, you know, I've got other things like the labels and other things that I could do. But then it also gives me pertinent information such as the dimensions of you know the, the pixel dimensions and the exposure and all sorts of good things there. So lots of good information coming from the metadata. But again, what type of metadata are you talking about? We we talked about there's there's these different types where you have the processing metadata and then of course the IPTC data, which is all of this stuff that makes sense to people, <laughs> I guess we could say. So when you have all of these things plugged in, so let's say we wanted to do this. So this was that and I'm gonna say owner and I'm not going to fill my address in for you just yet, but maybe I'll do my email. And so I've got my email in there now, and I can put my website in there. If we had that information, and we wanted to make sure it got through to all of our images here. All we got to do then is select more than one image. And then we can say, okay, it's time. To, you can see here we have it's mixed. It shows us this little code, and it says, hey, one of these images has information the other image has different information. It, it's not telling us that it is the same or, or, or it doesn't have information. It just says it has different information. So let's go ahead and sync the metadata. And then we can select here what pieces are we going to synchronize. We're going to synchronize the basic info, the IPTC copyright stuffs. I can fill it in here. I can tell it, yes, it is copyrighted. And all right, that's about all we need to worry about. I'm not going to worry about those items. We'll hit synchronize. And then we can see here how this information has been saved from this file and it's been written to this file. So we can then synchronize all that metadata. Now the keywords can also be synchronized. So if you were to have the same type of image, in this sense, the images are the same type of image. And if you were to say, I'm just going to keyword one of those images, and then I'll synchronize the data. Perfect. That's great. That's a great way of going about it. Let's take a quick look at what these sync settings will do for us. So with these synchronization settings over here, this is what's a little bit almost weird because all of these items have everything to do with the develop module in this button, but we're in the library module. So it looks like what Lightroom is able to do for us is if we notice something, we don't want to have to jump to the develop module to make these changes happen. We can still do it here in the library module. Why they called it sync settings? Well, okay, those are processing settings. See, what I would have normally assumed, and I tell me if I'm wrong here in, in what you assumed, I would have assumed that this was talking about the settings for synchronizing my metadata here. If there's additional settings that I could do in order to whatever it is I'm dealing with in my metadata. That, that is my initial thought, my initial interpretation, but obviously that is wrong and it gives us the opportunity to synchronize the develop settings. And that's kind of nice, that's fine. There's certainly nothing wrong with that. It's just, it seems a little bit oddly placed, but again, in the same vein with what we're dealing with when we talked about the fact that the histogram 
was here as well. And it kind of gives us a little bit of a nod towards looking at the develop module and understanding what's going to happen there when we're making our decisions. We're thinking about, again, do we what do we want as the best starting point for our images? Well, these sync settings here starts to make sense too. It's the same idea. Rather than forcing us to jump into the develop module, we're just able to do it here. And it's done much more quickly that way. All right, that wraps it up for this video where we were looking at the metadata. Oh, I didn't show you the comments. The reason why this is useless is because it for some reason says comments not supported here. I have no, I have never used comments. I have never seen this work. I don't know if it's something that is with my setup because the the account that I have here is through the university. As you know, I'm a university professor. And so maybe there's something there. Maybe I have no idea. I've never looked it up. So I just wanted to not skip it. So you could be like, hey, Brent, what about those comments? I have zero experience with that. Why it would be here, I don't even know. So I don't worry about it. It's just never been something that I missed. In the next video, we're going to wrap up all of these things about the library module with this one single button that says export. We'll see you there. Until then, happy shooting.